Hey there guys, how's it going? So, yeah, the baddest man on the planet, Deontay Wilder, the number one heavyweight in the history of the sport, has announced that he's going to be fighting Luis Ortiz, who of course is one of his fiercest rivals, and the much-anticipated rematch. Um, you know, it took a while to get this fight going, because I think Ortiz sort of went walkabout, you know, he was out at the Gala Bingo with all the pensioners, you know, and he never returned to the retirement home. He must have went wondering. I mean, at his age, I think he's gone senile. And um, yeah, but they've found him. He's all right. They, they've given him his blood pressure pills and they've sat him down with a nice hot cup of cocoa. And he's telling them stories about the World War Two and all that. So yeah, Luis Ortiz is all right and he'll be ready for the fight. And yeah, hopefully they can get this fight on, man, because that's exactly what we've all been waiting for. You know, we've all been waiting for the baddest man on the planet to finally show us if the first fight against his fiercest rival, Luis Ortiz, granddaddy, wasn't a, um, you know, wasn't a fluke. So yeah, I'm really looking forward to this one. And um, yeah, it takes place in October. In all seriousness, how do I think this fight's going to go? You know, I, I, I've only got one clear image in my mind of what I think is going to happen in this fight. And I could be wrong. And if I am wrong, I'm going to hold my hands up and I'm going to tell you guys straight up I was wrong, and I'm going to have to apologise to Luis Ortiz, but I've got to be honest, guys, and I've got to just tell you guys how I see it and, and what I think is going to happen. You know, Deontay Wilder's career has shown to me a pattern, and, and it's a very strange one at that. Now, it's a bit suspicious to me. Now, you guys might recall Deontay Wilder fought um, Bermain Stavern for the WBC title. Now, that fight went 12 rounds. Bermain Stavern gave a decent account of himself, despite losing clearly. Um, one thing he did show in the fight was a tremendous chin. He was able to take Deontay Wilder's punches all night. He was able to make it the distance and never really came close to being stopped. A couple of years later, he fights Deontay Wilder again. And the moment he takes the first clean punch of the fight in the first round, he goes down like a sack of spuds and he can't continue. I mean, make make of that what you will. I mean, you know, we had a, a, a similar situation like um, when he fought Malik Scott. You know, Malik Scott had always shown, at least from what I'd seen of him prior to that fight, he had always shown a fairly decent survival instinct. You know, he'd always shown a, a, a decent enough chin to be able to get through tough fights. You know, he'd only really been stopped. I, I believe he'd only been stopped once, and that was against Shizora in a fight he was winning. So... Malik Scott was a fairly durable enough fighter. He takes a half slap in the first round against Deontay Wilder and again goes down like a sack of spuds as if he's just been hit by a train. <laughs> um, you know, you had Dominic Brazil in Deontay Wilder's last fight. I mean, Dominic Brazil showed a, a tremendous chin when he fought Anthony Joshua, who is, of course, a, a monstrous puncher. Anthony Joshua was, was beating him up all night and... and you know, ended up knocking him out in the seventh. But prior to that, you know, Brazil showed a tremendous will to win and a tremendous heart and, and, and a very good chin and a lot of durability. Yeah, well, he goes in there against Deontay Wilder and, yeah, the moment he takes one punch, he goes down like a sack of spuds as, as if he's just been curb stomped by Vince Vong in Brawling Cell Block 99. <laughs> uh, are you guys starting to see a pattern? Are you starting to see a pattern with Deontay Wilder, man? Um, I, I mean, I'm, I, I was listening to a live stream the other day and, you know, people were comparing Deontay Wilder's power to the likes of Mike Tyson and other heavyweights from the past and saying that, you know, Lennox Lewis and whatnot, they were saying that, that Deontay Wilder may very well go down as the hardest puncher in the history of boxing. Well, I, th I think you guys know what I'm going to say and you can probably tell, man. I think what's going to happen in this fight, and again, if I'm wrong, I will hold my hands up. I will hold my hands up and admit it. I think that Luis Ortiz is going to lay down for Deontay Wilder. I think he's going to do exactly the same thing that Bermain Stavern, Malik Scott, and Dominic Brazil did. I think he's going to go down in the first round. That's what I think is going to happen here. Um, if it's if it isn't the first round, it might be the second or the third or maybe the fourth, you know, because they don't want to make it too suspicious. But at this point, I don't think anything could be any more suspicious with Deontay Wilder. I mean, it's suspicious enough that every single time Deontay Wilder has an opponent that's any kind of threat to him, 
Like any 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 time he gets cornered into a position where, you know, like all champions at some point because of rankings and mandatories, any time he gets cornered into a position like that where he has to take on a challenge, all of a sudden there's a failed drug test, a failed drug test of the opponent absolving Deontay Wilder of his responsibilities to fight this guy. And, yeah, as if that wasn't suspicious enough, as if it wasn't suspicious enough that fighters with good chins have been going down like Amir Khan the first time they get hit by Deontay Wilder in, in you know, spec- speculative-looking punches, as if that wasn't suspicious enough. I think the fact that Luis Ortiz turned down a career-high payday, and when I see a career-high payday, I'm talking multiple times his career-high payday to fight Anthony Joshua... Shows to me that the PBC and Al Heyman have got Luis Ortiz by his old shriveled up balls. And they're going to just... He, he's going to do whatever they tell him. He's their their caged gorilla. You know, he likes to call himself King Kong. Well, they've got him in the cage and, you know, <laughs> they're going to release him and, and feed him to Deontay Wilder. That's what's going to happen, man. And I, I think he's going to take a dive. I think Luis Ortiz is going to lay down in the first round. I think Deontay Wilder is going to come out. And, you know, we're going to see one of them famous Deontay Wilder bitch slaps. You know, it's like an Ian Beale left hook. <laughs> Some of you will get that reference if, if you're from the UK. Um, but, yeah, it, it, it'll throw one of them little half slaps, one of them Ian Beale left hooks. And <laughs> and Luis Ortiz will stumble all over the place as if he's just been... As if he's just had his head blown off with a shorn off shotgun. And it, it'll, it'll fall flat on his face, you know, sparkle. Uh, <laughs> he'll, be, he'll be like David Price in there, you know, when he got banged out by Povetkin. You know, that's what Luis Ortiz will be like in the first round against Wilder when he gets caught with one of them little half slaps. So, yeah, that's how I see this fight going, man. I, I don't really know even even how else to put it, man. I, I think Deontay Wilder by an early knockout, potentially in the first round, and the baddest man on the planet's reign as heavyweight champion will continue and they'll pretend like they're going to make the Tyson Fury rematch, which will probably never happen because Fury's with top rank now, and yeah, Wilder's with Heyman, who doesn't do business with top rank. So yeah, that's all. That's all I've got to say about this one, man. Let me know what you guys think. I think Ortiz will lay down early in the fight for Wilder. Let me know what you guys think. Thanks for watching, and God bless.